there's some things that are true about these that make them, they call them special. You're I mean, still doing the factoring the same, really. You can do it the same. But there's something special about them. I'm going to start with this one over here on the far right. Okay? Just reading it backwards, what would you ask yourself? Reading that one on the far right backwards, what would you ask yourself? What multiplies to be? 64. 64 and adds to be? What's the answer? 8 and? It repeats. Did you notice that? So really, isn't it this? What's x plus 8 times x plus 8? x plus 8 squared, right? This is what we call a perfect square trinomial. Here's how you identify that. Okay, It's, it's kind of hard to identify, but once you identify it, all of a sudden your life becomes really easy. So this is all about making things easier, this section is. So how do I identify it? Well, I have to first identify that we have trinomials on the ends and that the last trinomial is a plus. That's the only way it'll work. So there has to be, and you want to write this in your notes, okay? There must be a trinomial both of the first and last terms, and both must be positive. I don't care about what the middle term sign is, but the first and last terms both have to be positive, and they have to be perfect squares. You guys know your perfect squares up to 225. We did that, right? Yes? No? Maybe so? Did we not make a list of those? We haven't? Okay, we're going to do it really quick. Okay? Perfect square is up to 225. What's the first perfect square? 1. Why? 1 times 1 is? What's the next perfect square? Just write these down a, down a page. It's really quick. 1, then what? 4. Why is 4 a perfect square? Why is 4 a perfect square? 2 times 2. Okay. Next one? Next one? Next one? 25. Next one? 36. Next one? How do you get 36? Wait, I don't. Six times six. Six times six. You're just doing number times itself, right? So five times five, 25, just 16. That's how he's getting them. I mean, he's not doing, it's not a ton of math he's doing. <laughs> so, so don't think that Alex is really going that fast. He's really not. It's just really easy. One times one, two times two, three times three, four times four, five times five, six times six, seven times seven is? Next one will be? 64, next one? 81. 81, next one? 100. 100, next one? 121. 121, next one? Now everybody knows that many. Most people do, because you learned your 12 times tables, right? The next one, is, some people do and some people don't. You know what it is? 13 times 13? 169. Okay. And then 14 times 14, people don't usually know. It's 196. It's easy to remember those two, if you think about it. 169, 196. You see how they're opposites of each other? So they actually become pretty easy to memorize, actually. 169 is 13 squared, and 196 is 14 squared. You see what I mean? So it's easier to remember than you think. And then 15 squared is 225. So it's really easy. You shouldn't even have to write them down. It's pretty easy to know those first 50 those first ones, okay? Other ones gets a little harder to recognize, obviously, as it gets bigger. But generally, you should be able to figure those out. So if those are perfect square trinomials, there's something that still has to be true about this middle term. Because maybe it isn't going to use 8 and 8, right? Could, are there other factors of 64? Yeah, I could have used 4 and 16, right? But then that sum would have been 20. So if that would have been a plus 20 in the middle, would this have been a perfect square trinomial factorization? No, it has to be exactly double the square roots multiplied together. And that's something else you want to write in your notes. The middle term, doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, but the middle term's coefficient has to be double the square roots product. It has to be double the square roots product. Okay, what's the square root of x squared? X. Everybody got it? What's the square root of 64? 8. Product, 8x, doubled, is it the middle term? 
Yes. Okay. Then whatever the sign in the middle is stays there. Okay. Very simple. Let's try this one. This one looks difficult, but it's not. It's a perfect square trinomial. How do I know that? How do I know it's a perfect square trinomial? Just by looking at it. I don't need to do the box method. Could I? Yeah, sure. But I'm not going to because that sucks. So, <laughs> so I'm going to do this easy, right? Because I can notice that it's a perfect square trinomial. How do I notice? What's the first term? 25x squared. Is that a perfect square? My brain should say, ah, perfect square. All right, how about 49? Perfect square. So therefore, if I take the square roots of those and multiply them and double them, it might be the middle term, is it? What's the square root of 25? What's the square root of 49? Seven. What's 5 times 7? 35 doubled. Are we good? Yeah. We're good. So what should I write here? Just the square root of the first term. 5 what? And the square root of the last term. Sign in the middle. Done. Didn't even have to do box or nothing else. Does it always work? No, no, no. This is special situations, right? Has to be a perfect square trinomial, meaning perfect squares on the ends. Has to be double the product of those perfect squares in the middle. You got it? Otherwise it won't work. But that did. I mean, some of them do, and that's what's cool about them. Uh, let's go to this last one. Does this look like a perfect square trinomial? No, but it might be, because maybe there's a common factor. Now look at it again. Well, we'll go into 12, 60, and 75. What is 7 plus 5? 7 plus 5 is 12. 6 plus 0 is 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. I know what goes into all three of those. 3. Everybody understand that? I expect you already know that, don't you? If you add the digits of any number and they add up to a number divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 6 plus 0 is 6, 7 plus 5 is 12. All those are divisible by 3, right? Those sums. So therefore, all these are divisible by 3. I might not know what it is at this point, but that's okay. What is it? 3 into 12. I'm just factoring it out, which means I'm dividing it out. So I mean, what's this first term going to be? 4. 4 what? X. X squared, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, Carter, what's the next one? Um, um, negative, right? Negative 20. Negative 20x. And Maddie? Maddie? Is that right? Maddie, what's the next one? Um, good. Yeah, that one was a little bit harder, but good job. It's 25. Now that you're looking at it, what are you saying, Sabrina? So you can break it down. It's probably a perfect square what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are we learning today? It's probably a perfect square what? Uh, trinomial. Right. How come? Because that's a perfect square and that's a perfect square. That's what I want to look for because then I don't have to do box method. If I can't do perfect square trinomial, I'll have to do what? Box, box method. But I don't want to do box method unless I absolutely have to. I guess you can. By the way, you can and it'll work. You can use box method and it will work. But... Why do that when you can do it easier? You know what I mean? I'll show you the box method works on this one, but, but let's just do it. So what should this be? By the way, does it work? Yeah. What's the square of that? 2x, what's the square of that? Five. five, two times five is? Seven. 10 doubled is? Seven. Boom, we're good. It's 2x minus five squared, done. Isn't that nice to have it easier? I'm always for easier. Now, let me show you something, though. I will do the box method, and you'll see that it does work. So if I did box method on this, and I put a 25, 4 times 25 is 100x squared, and then I'd say, hey, I want it to be a negative 20x when I'm done. So it has to times to be 100, add to be 20, times to 100, add to be 20. 10 and what? 10, 10 and 10, x and x. Uh, they're both negative, so that it'll be add to be a negative 20. So negative 10x, negative 10x, box method, right? Factor out the common factor, what is it? 2x, what's the common factor here? Negative. Negative 5, factor straight up. 2x, factor straight up. Negative 5. 
Same thing, isn't it? 2x minus 5 squared. So, just makes it easier. I mean, you can do that every time. If you want to do lock up, fine. I don't. <laughs> I want to recognize I have a perfect square, a perfect square. If I take the square roots and double it, it's a middle term, so I can write it like that. I can be done. I'm just trying to make it easier, right? That's the, that's the goal. Okay, now all of a sudden we look at these. What's different from these and everything else we factored? They're conjugates. They're perfect squares also, by the way. More than just conjugates. They are perfect squares. It's a difference of perfect squares. And there's only how many terms? Two. When I see two terms, this is something I might write in my notes. When I see two terms with a square, I'm looking for a difference of perfect what? Squares. Otherwise, it's probably not going to factor. Okay, but it will factor if it's a difference, I mean there's a subtraction sign between them, of perfect squares. Notice every one of these has a what between them? Every one of them has a negative between them. Okay, every one of these three. Let's do this one first, it's the easy one. What's this one going to be? Yeah, the cool part is they're both x's, they're both 9's, that's the only factors of this, is x and x. There's more factors of 81. But I want the perfect squares. Again, this is all about perfect squares, right? So the perfect square is that it's going to be 9 and 9. 1's plus, 1's what? Minus. It will factor into those conjugates we were multiplying before. Because what's going to happen with the inside and outside terms when you multiply that? What happens with the outside term? Negative 9x. What happens with the inside term? Positive 9x. What's going to happen? No x's. Is there any x's in that? No. So we're good. x squared minus 81. That's the factorization. All right, let's do this one. This is actually easier than this one. I know this one looks easier, but this is actually easier. Okay? Are those perfect squares? Yes. Now, I wanted to show you this one because of the exponents. All an exponent has to be to be an e a perfect square is be what? Even. It has to be an even power. If it's an even power, is it a perfect square? What's the square root of x to the 10? x to the 5th. What's the square root of x to the 100? x to the 50th. And what's the square root of x to the 48th? x to the 24th. It's just half of that, right? So, so any time that these are even, we know they're perfect squares. So that's kind of nice. Any time it's even. All right, so what's the square root of x to the 4th, y to the 6th? x squared y what? Cubed. We're just dividing them by 2. That's something else you might want to write down. To take the square root of an exponent, you simply divide the exponent by what? Two. 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 To take the square root of an exponent, you simply divide the exponent by two. That's even true for odd ones. It's just that you end up with fractions, by the way. All right. I also put that over here. How come I put it in both spots, by the way? When I multiply those, what will it give me? First spot here. By the way, that's true even here x and x plus 8, x times x would give you what? x squared. By the way, that way that I used to do these, first term times second term times 2, that's the middle term. Did you notice that? Every one of those, first term times second term times 2, that's the middle term. Negative 35 times 2 is 70. Times 70. They're just perfect square triangles. All right, now how about this one? Difference, signs must be what? Different. One's plus and one's what? Minus, but perfect squares, what's the square root of 144? 12. 12 and 12. What's the square root of z to the 10th? Z to the 5th. Z to the 5th. Z to the 5th. They're like super easy. It's embarrassing, honestly, how easy these are. This section is all about being easy. It wants to be easy. It's trying to show you there are easier ways on some, sort, some types of special problems, right? Ones that fit certain criteria. And these that fit it make it easy. This one doesn't look like it fits, but it could, if I can factor out a what? A 7. I'm going to assume that I can factor out a 7. Okay, if I can't, I'm not out nothing, right? All I am is like, oh, well, I can't factor out a 7. There's no way to factor that. I'm just going to factor it, right? But let's try and pull out a 7. What will that give you? X squared minus, what's 7 into 84? Anybody know? 7 into 84? 12. 12. Yeah. 
What's 7 into 7? 1. Okay. I mean, I obviously didn't know that 7 times 121 equals 847, but it's not that hard to figure out. Do I have perfect squares now? Yes. What do I got? Uh, 7, x, and x, and then what? Plus, Plus 11 minus what? 11. It doesn't really matter. Let's try one last one. And then I'll set you into doing it. This one's going to be really, really difficult. Okay. Could be wrong. What's the problem with this one? Um, I don't know that that's a perfect square. 256. Um, Let's test it. Okay. Just get a calculator out. If it is a perfect square, it's got to be bigger than what? 20 or 15, right? Because yeah. 15 times 15 is 225, right? Okay, so it's bigger than 15. Try 16. What's 16 times 16? Boom! So what is this factor to be? Four. Oh, x4, my bad. Yeah. Minus? 16. And x4? Plus. Plus what? 16. Doesn't matter which one was plus and which one was minus. Mm -hmm. No. Am I done? Yeah. Your Alex will yell at you. What will it yell at you? Somebody had to yell at him today. Who had to yell at him? I think it was you. What did it say? It said to factor it completely. Factor it completely. You're not wrong. Are we wrong? No. no, we're not wrong, but it's not factored completely. Why? You can't go down. You can still mm -hmm. square root it. That's the difference of perfect squares, right? So what's that one? X squared four. minus four. Four. Minus four. Can I factor that one? No. Cannot factor a sum of squares. Do you know why? Because of sign. From who? The Lord? <laughs> no. That isn't the right answer. Let me give you this. Let me show you why. Let's say I had x squared, not x to the fourth, but just x squared, plus let's say 9. Okay, just for fun. Solve this. How do I solve it? How would you solve this, by the way? x squared equals 9. How would I solve that? Take the one of both sides. Square root, and I end up with x equals what? Plus or minus, right? What? 3. Because what's 3 squared? 9. What's negative 3 times negative 3? 9. 9. That's why it's plus or what? Minus. Everybody agree with that? Solve this. Minus 9. Now what? Square root both sides, right? What's the problem? Negative. Square root of a negative 9, what is it? Negative. Give me two numbers that multiply to be negative 9 that are exactly the same. Negative 3, negative three times negative 3 is positive, positive 9. There isn't one. Really, this is 3i. Because that's the imaginary number. Oh. Square root of negative 1 is, and we'll get into those later, complex yeah, numbers. Okay, but, so it's a, it's a number, but it's not a real number, right? It's an imaginary number. But, so can I really take the square root of a negative in, in real numbers? No. So can I factor, by the way, that was x plus 9, can I factor this in real numbers? No. No, because it would cause an i. It would cause an imaginary number. So you cannot, cannot factor a sum of perfect squares. If That's it's something an to learn. imaginary number, why does it exist? <laughs> Why does Joe exist right here? I like that you actually looked around the corner <laughs> trying to see who Joe was. That was actually very... Did anybody see that? She said, by Caleb. Caleb's kind of a big guy, you know. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden she goes... Joe's the eraser? You named your eraser Joe?
Joe. <laughs> All right. I don't know why men very people exist, memory. I don't know. All right, so, but they do. All right, so, so am I done? Mackenzie, it'll yell at me still. Why will it yell at me? Not factored completely. Why is it not factored completely? Difference of perfect what? Squares. This is what? X plus 2 and X minus 2 and then x squared plus 4 can't factor that it's a sum every time you look at that and you say I can't factor you should just say sum of a and then you're like yep can't factor it so. that's it oh this is x to the fourth sorry I'm on my head good call but yeah I can't factor a sum of squares I can only so this can't be factored this can't be factored this is a difference, though. Can. This was a difference. Can. That's the total factorization. Now, Alex won't yell at me. I will say, okay, you got it factored completely. Have I got that? Not that, Alex. Not your friend, Alex, that's sitting next to you, right? I mean... But imaginary things don't exist, she says. Yeah, whatever. All right. So that's all there is to it. Oh, you can stop that.